Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, here to read one verse. This is the verse that when I prayed, this is what I got <clears throat> from the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance, to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. <laughs> a lot of times we're not really sure what that means. See, godly sorrow will make you really want to change. It's something that happens inside that if you stumble over your own two feet or you say something that wasn't quite right or your attitude was kind of hanging sideways and tilted, you know it. You know, you're pretty much the first one to know it if you're really endeavoring to walk in God's ways. And when you see yourself sidestep and say, ooh, that wasn't too cool. Well, not only do you realize it's not too cool, but it bothers you. I mean, it will bother you to the point where it will gnaw at you. And you will get to the point where you say, okay, I got to go talk to so-and-so, Brother Appleseed or, or Sister Banana Head. I got to go talk to him because that wasn't cool and I don't want them to think I was trying to hurt them. And it won't rest until you deal with that. That's godly sorrow. Number one, you love God too much to just let it slide. Number two, you love your brother and sister too much to let that slide and let take a chance of them thinking that you were really trying to hurt them. Called reconciliation. So when you are sorry in a worldly sense, this is what ends up happening. Uh, regret. You might end up like, oh, I wish I hadn't said that because they're going to come at me. I know they're going to do something cold-blooded. They're going to retaliate. Watch. Watch what they do. Yes, you're going to find a way to get me back. It's not that you're sorry for what you did. You're sorry because of what it might cause later on, the repercussions. Or you did something wrong and you got caught. And you're shedding crocodile tears because now the cops want to, you know, hightail your behind on to jail. And you're sitting up there with tears filled up in your eyes, realizing I really blew it. Oh, man. Why didn't I just go home? Now, you're not sorry that you did what you did because you kind of enjoyed that part. The part you don't enjoy is getting caught. Am I right or am I wrong? That's, that's worldly sorrow. It worketh death, uh, which means it's counterproductive. It doesn't do anything to make you grow or make you improve from the inner man. It's just a mindset where you feel like, have you ever seen kids when they get in trouble and the teacher catches them and they get mad at the teacher? Because they got caught either cheating or they got caught picking on somebody and they're mad at the person they picked at and they're mad at the teacher. And they're the ones who are wrong. Now that's the thing that really cracks me up. Abusive people do the same thing. Look what you made me do. If you didn't get me so mad, I wouldn't have made that turn and I wouldn't have got a ticket. Now look what you made me do. You made me get a ticket. Uh, duh. Who was behind the wheel? You're not regretting that you did something wrong. That you may have misrepresented God. No. You're upset because now you have to pay the consequence for something you chose to do of your own volition. But no, you need a scapegoat. So you got to blame the person you're mad at and you got to blame the, uh, blame the cop. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're funny like that, but that's human nature. That's not godly sorrow, you guys. That's regret. That's old crap. Look what just happened. Man, I got to pay all that money. Yeah. That's what that is. Think about it. Godly sorrow will make you sit there and say, you know what? I really was wrong. And I'm sorry because my attitude was so bad. I was I was really arguing with my wife or my husband or fussing at my kids. And I was running late. And I never did look down at that speedometer. So I'm really sorry if if I... If you could let me slide, I, w I will definitely do better. But if not, then I can't argue with you because cause you caught me fair and square. Yeah. That's a humble spirit that really wants to do better by God. That's godly sorrow because it will work repentance. And repentance means change. You will change from operating one way and do a 180 degree turn and adjust your behavior accordingly. I'm so serious. I mean, when you really are trying to live for God, you will be surprised the things that you are willing to relinquish. Because your motives, your, your motive is your driving force. You want to please God. You want to represent in a way that makes other people say, wow, there's really something to that. And it's not because you're trying to ego trip. Because half the time you're doing what you probably would not do if you were in your flesh anyway. But because you're in the spirit, you're driven by a different force and a different a mode of uh, a, a different lineup of motives. Your whole thing has changed. Do you understand what I mean? Like, f for example, when I was taking care of my husband, if my husband uh, was sitting there and we were all laughing and joking and talking and I'm having fun and I see that he looks excessively tired or he's winded, or maybe starting to break out in a sweat. Something's going wrong, because he's a diabetic or something. And I'm checking him out. Okay, is that his heart? Is that his sugar? Well, I'm immediately, because my motive is geared towards looking after him. I love him with all my heart. And I'm, I'm very protective of him. Well, the first thing I'm thinking of is, hey, this has got to stop. i got to handle that because that is my priority, not socializing. I can socialize anytime, but right now he needs me, and I need to, to see. I need to see what I can do to help regulate that or we're going to the hospital, and I hate going to the hospital. I've never had to go for myself. But I would definitely, I mean for surgery or anything, but I would definitely drop everything to take him because that's where my heart is. You will drop whatever you have to do. You will cut some friends loose. You will cut entertainment loose. You will drop whatever you have to do because God needs you to ante up and grow in righteousness okay what I'm trying to say in case you feel like you're being beaten up <laughs> if you don't feel the desire ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit because when you try to live saved on your own in your own strength on your own fuel Trust me, you run out so fast, you will burn up. You have to have a new nature. You can't do it with your old nature. And the only way you can do it with a new nature is with a new spirit. 
You have to be operating under the Spirit of God. That's where your power comes from. We'll talk about that in more depth on another video. God bless you.